I gotta tell you, up to this point, we've been spoiling you a little bit with equations. We've been giving you the easy ones. I want to show you how to solve the ones with fractions. Here is a fractional equation. It has a lot of frac at least one fraction in it. What do we do to solve this? I'm going to give you one way that will work all the time. This will be a job for your old buddy. Now, don't forget, the LCD, if you can find it, is really a hero. It's lower than low so that you don't have to deal with high numbers. And it can cancel out all those denominators in one step if you use the LCD. Now if we get rid of all the denominators, we won't have any fractions and we'll be looking at an equation that we hopefully know how to solve. Now what are we allowed to do with the LCD? Consider the multiplication property of equality. And that is, if I multiply one side of an equation by anything, I'm going to have to do it to the other side. And that's what I'm going to do. So here's your tip. To solve a fractional equation, we're going to multiply everybody by the least common denominator. And I write it over 1 to emphasize that it's in the numerator because it's killing denominators. Now in this case, the least common denominator is 6. Watch what happens here. In our first group, 6 divided by 2, or 6 candled with 2, is 3, and then I have an x and I get 3x. Notice, no fraction. In the next group, I clean up the 3 and I get 2 and x. Notice that I needed somebody that would cancel both 2 and 3 out, so I had to use the least common denominator of 2 and 3. Now I have to be fair, so even though 1 didn't need any cleanup, he's going to have to get it. Nothing cancels, so the answer is 6. Now I'm not done yet, but I have an equation that I can solve. Let's put the common terms together because they're on the same side. And what do I have to do to get x alone? Divide by 5. And the answer, in fact, is 6 fifths, or 1 and 1 fifth. Pretty cool. Now this is going to allow us to solve some very complicated equations. OK, let's look at this one first thing we have to figure out is what is the least common denominator. Look at all the bottoms, and only the bottoms. We need to find out what the LCD of 7, 2, and 2 is. If you can do that, it's going to save you. Let's see. 14 cancels the 7, and I get a 2, and the z gives me 2z. Once again, no fraction. And if you ever end up with a fraction, you know you picked the wrong number, by the way. 14 divided by 2 is 7, and 7 times 5, once again, no fraction. Here again, we're going to cancel, and I get a 7. And remember, you write the coefficient prior to the variable. So we're not going to say z7, we're going to say 7z. Now, we'll solve the equation. Let's subtract 2z from both sides. And then who's keeping z from being alone? The 5. I'll divide by 5. And there it is. z equals 7. It wasn't so bad. It looked ugly at the beginning, though, didn't it? Not too bad, is it? OK. Let's just do one more. Now, sometimes they're so easy they're hard, I always say. OK? This one. We can do the same way. It has a fraction in it, so right away, red flag goes off, and I say, what's the least common denominator? Well, there's only one denominator. So it's an easy LCD, if you would. The common denominator 
is 11. So let's see. On the left side, we have 11 times negative 3x is negative 33x. And on the right side, we cleaned up that denominator, and we have negative 6. Now, you should know how to solve this equation. I'm going to get x alone by dividing by negative 33 and canceling, and I get x is 6 thirty-thirds. Don't forget, a lot of these answers are going to be fractions, so you'll always have to reduce a fraction if you want full credit. I'll divide top and bottom by 3, and the answer, the final answer, is 2 elevenths. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, go practice it before you forget, and it'll work every time.